uh, Dr. Rick dropping in here. Hope everybody is having a great start to your week, a great start to your year. Uh, you know the routine. If you like what you hear and see on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. If you have been a follower or you have become familiar of the work that we do, through the Black Voice, through the Odyssey Project, through Black Men Lead, Restoring Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, and more as far as what we do in uh, community work, please look in the description box and see how you can give and support our work. It is so uh, desperately needed. Now, also, for those of you who have followed me, you know my work in the uh, scope and realm of epigenetics and psychology, epigenetics and adverse childhood experiences, epigenetics and multi-generational trauma, the need for healing and trauma healing and epigenetics and psychology and so much uh, of the work I've done in research, in dissemination and in pro program development. I am doing a symposium, which is part two of an ongoing series here in uh, Houston. Uh, in conjunction with Rail Spring Family Clinic and Institute, uh, also Harris County Sheriff's Office and the Greenhouse Church. We're doing the symposium. It is on epigenetics, the influence of trauma and its influence on long-term health, out health outcomes, but also its direct correlation with the microaggressions and the stress uh, levels associated with the distrust for law enforcement and how we can build and change that as well as it's directly connected to our efforts in reducing recidivism as far as incarceration is concerned of African-American males specifically, but also uh, the growing and increasing rate that our African-American sisters are being incarcerated as well. That is going to be this Saturday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. CST. It's going to be streamed live, but it is a free event for those who want to attend. After I present my lecture and do my Q&A, we will have a panel discussion about many of the socioeconomic ills within the black community and ways that we can get it. I will have friends that are uh, specialists in the area of business development, business growth, finance, psychology, sociology, and uh, academics and more. We will attack this. I invite you, if you're in the Houston area, to come out to Greenhouse Church uh, on the north side. If you know what Greens Point Mall is, you know what Greenhouse Church is. Uh, Pastor Decker has been going at it uh, for a while and come out and join us. With that being said, uh, I have been asked to address this particular topic that I'm going to talk about now. Uh, I am still questioning whether I'm going to actually publish this because uh, I take issue with what's being done. But the fact that it's being done needs to be addressed. For those who don't know, and I won't be going into any details. So if you are one of the people that's on here for, t for the T or the low down and the skimmy, I'm not going to give you a whole lot on it, but the basics that's already out there and everybody can see it flowing down their timelines. Uh, some little, little to unknown rapper, Loose Cannon, has gone on some podcast show and made the proclamation that uh, right before Shawnee Henderson, who used to be Shawnee O'Neal, the ex-wife of... Shaquille O'Neal and the current wife of Pastor Keon Henderson, who is a pastor here in the H. Um, I mean, literally a very short period of time before marrying Pastor uh, Keon had this rendezvous with this guy, paid him some money or whatever. And the thing is that out of the blue, this guy comes out and brings this out. These people I think got married last year or the year before last uh, I'm not here to question the legitimacy of their marriage as many are doing I'm not here to talk about whether it is a PR 
situation. My thing is I have enough managing my life without uh, attacking or finding uh, orifices and cracks in someone else's situation or relationship. Uh, when I talk about situations on this channel, it is for the sake of of hopefully illuminating some truths and shaking the tree of truth uh, t for the purpose of bringing some illumination to the things that we need to change. Social media has created this platform where anybody can post anything. They don't need any proof. They don't have to have any previous developed reputation of credibility. They simply have to say it. And because we live in a society <clears throat> and we operate in a culture that the vast majority of people literally thirst for negativity. <clears throat> The old adage, misery loves company, consistently rears its head. And you find people who want to believe the worst about anyone else. And let me say something here. From a personal perspective, I have no horse in the race. I have no stake in the fight, so to speak, outside of truth, right, and of elevation of how we move and operate and and deal with one another. Uh, I'm not a fan of Shawnee O'Neal. I'm also not a detractor of Shawnee O'Neal. She's a person. Uh, I'm not a reality show person, and I'm, I believe she created Basketball Wives um, and all that. I'm, I'm not into those type of shows. Uh, I don't malign people who are. I just know the things that I allow to come into my gates has an impact on my state of mind. And I'm going to actually be talking about this at this symposium, uh, the, the power to impact our health by what we consume in content, uh, by what we watch, by what we look at, by who we deal with. And yet we literally thirst and chase. I'll give you a prime example. The shows that are sharing uh, that interview with this this rapper are getting all kind of major hits. Um, and at the same time, I can pull the five most informative shows when it comes to black empowerment from Dr. Bobby Price, who is extremely well known and has a huge following uh, to uh, 19 Keys. And I can bet you that as popular as they are, and these guys are extremely popular, everyone knows who they are, that they won't get the spike and rise in any one particular segment that they have that you're going to see in the rise in this negative information and negative content. I didn't use myself because, again, I'm not in that realm of following and subscribers, and it's never been my goal. I don't play the viral game. I don't uh, do a lot of things to push it, and a lot of people have asked me to do some things uh, that I simply haven't uh, just I simply haven't agreed to do because it's not where I'm at. Uh, I try to stay away from judging people. I judge things. I judge behaviors. I judge patterns. Uh, I know I'm human. And so when I look at what happened with this thing, I'm very careful. I think that when we talk about places we are going to be, I think we have to be very careful about how we move, but we all have skeletons in our closet. We all have these things that we've done. Now, the things I've done um, are things that are out there in one way or another. And maybe one day they pop up, maybe they don't, but I could care less because I've lived my life and I lived it with no regrets. Not everything that I've done, I'm proud of, but it's made me the person that I've become and I'm growing. But for a person who is married to a pastor who is trying to represent something, especially in a time where we're seeing so many negative reports on pastors 
and the Christian faith has taken this major hit. And I'm not here to champion the cause for that either, but I'm saying it's taking this major hit. If you've got somebody who is legitimately trying to be a positive force and now you take that hit and now you throw that wrench into a situation and there's no reason to do so. That person isn't coming for you. That person isn't checking for you. That person isn't taking shots at you. You felt the need to come out and air that out. Now, here's the thing. The one thing I tell you is you guys that are going to do what you're going to do. Be careful who you do it with, number one. And like I said, a lot of people out there that have done some things, everything from crime to cheating on your spouse to uh, other shady type things that you shouldn't be doing. Then you turn around and you look up and years later after you've literally probably become a new person. Now, in this instance, this seems to be relatively new, uh, but you, you, you become a new person, right? You're not that person you were then. But see, there are people out there that are going to hate you because you're becoming. There are people out there that are going to hate you because you're transforming. There are people out there that are going to hate you because you are no longer a representation of what they're used to, what they gravitate to, what they can be okay with. And now you are literally challenging through, challenging them through, their tra through your transformation to change themselves. They become an enemy. They become aggressive. They become vitriolic. They all of a sudden start digging. You would be surprised at how many people devote and dedicate enormous amounts of time and energy to finding negative things about people to go out and share, number one, because it gets likes, shares, and it creates viral uh, exposure, but also because they get a thrill out of tearing people down. Now, here's the problem with this entire dynamic is you cannot have an energy that is dedicated to destruction and simultaneously build. You're either tearing down or you're building up. You can't simultaneously function from two different spheres of the same polar. And, and what I mean by that is when you dedicate that type of negative energy, you rob yourself from being positioned in a place to build and grow and become. And that can be an individual experience, but it can also be a collective experience. I see far too many of my people gravitating towards negativity. I see far too many of my people literally invested in hearing garbage and getting quote unquote the tea to the point that all of the information that could literally transform your life is being overlooked and bypassed because it's on a different frequency, it's on a different vibration, it's on a different level. And the sad part is we are seeing more and more of this. We're seeing a disruption of critical thought. We're seeing a disruption of unity. We're seeing a disruption of true, authentic, and genuine love for one another. We're seeing a disruption of care and concern and empathy of our own kind. And it's all being pushed by destructive, divisive, disunifying uh, forces. And we don't even realize that we're being played and we're being pushed. We have these platforms that we have access to that we are 100% in control of until we piss them off and they take it away from us. And what do we choose to do with it? Attack one another. If you notice, this, this goes back with me the first channel i had up came up in 2010 This goes back to then. If you've noticed, I've never had beef with anybody that's out there that's doing something that's positive for black people. 
I've had my opinion about certain people, uh, and, and you'll know who they are. Uh, Jason Whitlock, Steve Harvey, um, Stephen A. Smith, Roland Martin, uh, anybody I felt that was pushing negativity or falsehoods or misleading my people, I stood up and I took a stand and I spoke on it. Now, I've had differences with some people who are within the construct of black elevation uh, on some things that they did to me personally and on some things that I felt like they shouldn't have been doing, but I dealt with it internally. It never became open. Why? Because I'm not bigger than the people. I'm not bigger than the struggle. I'm not bigger than the fight. And I'm not going to allow my ego to get in, way, in the way of something that should be the focal point. And sometimes you set things aside. I just don't believe that that negative energy, that focus that's given to that type of stuff has any ability to produce the type of things that I truly believe in. And uh, again, the other side of it is if you want to find something on somebody, I'm almost certain you can find it. I don't care how well put together they are now. I don't care what it's. I'm pretty sure you can find something if you're looking for it. But problem is, if they're really, truly working, if they're really, truly doing the work, why are we digging in and stirring up things that once was for the sake of moving ourselves forward in an area that does not serve our people well? Any negative content like this, it's sensationalism. It is negative in energy and frequency, which means it actually has a negative impact on your biology. I'm going to be talking about all of this on, on Saturday at the symposium. has a negative impact on your biology, negatively impacts your gene expression, your gene function. It literally makes you sicker over time. And that's what we're chasing. And you don't think that those little niblets are being put out there on purpose. You don't think that the people in power have far more money than Dr. Rick has to do the research to understand how this stuff works and how they can literally kill you without killing you. You don't think that's happening. You don't think that they understand how to create this unity between black men and black women so that we are not in a position to do what we need to do as a unit in the home. Let me tell you something. There are these things in life called patterns. Patterns exist. When you see something, it says, okay, you, you, you say, okay, this happens and then it happens and then it happens. And see, this thing that happens is the uh, promotion of negative content, the promotion of disunity, the promotion of miseducation, the, 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 the driving force of uh, the school to prison pipeline, mass incarceration and recidivism and all these things I'm going to be talking about on this coming Saturday. You got all these mechanisms and they are repetitive enough that you can see a pattern. It's not an arbitrary experience. It's not an an anomaly. It's a pattern. And then you notice that this pattern is not just being created and execute it and perpetuate it by one entity or one person. There are multiple people from multiple entities from multiple sources perpetuating the same type patterns. So now you must say there is a level of collusion and conspiracy. That means that multiple people have made up in their minds that they're going to push a specific agenda that is counterproductive and counterintuitive for a certain group of people to produce a certain result and yet we miss it and we fall right in line we literally provide the power to white supremacy through our own compliance through our own participation i've said this many times and i've said this uh for for years for decades that we are the only people that i can find in history that has uh, readily participated and contributed and financed our own demise and here we are at some point, we're going to have to come to uh, the conclusion that 
we have to monitor what we take into our gates. Our gates have to become sacred. We have to realize that while we have been conditioned to be entertained by low frequency vibrations, that it does us no good. It's bad for our health. It's bad for our progress. It weakens our resolve. It works against us spiritually. It damages us genetically. And yet we consistently push through it. It's time that we stop. It's time that we find the focus. Again, I don't know Shani Henderson, her married name now. Uh, I know uh, that she was once married to Shaquille O'Neal. I, I know that he's going on the record and says that he he regrets how he treated her. Uh, I know that she is now married to Keon Henderson, which is a, a popular uh, preacher for a mega church here in Houston um, that has a strong following. Um, anybody who has followed me has chronicled my um, volatile relationship with the church, so to speak, as a former leader in the church. Um, and so many things that I don't co-sign or approve of, but I believe in God. I believe in my faith. I believe in the need to be effective. Uh, I just believe that we've got to be true to ourselves and be true to God and how we deal with God's people. And so there are just some things that I don't co-sign on, and I'm not here to go in on the church right now. What I'm here to say is when we do have ministers, and I have heard nothing negative about Pastor Keon, um, and if I did, I wouldn't say it here. I would actually go to him and speak to him about it, as I have done with pastors in the past, and as I have done with other people who are viewed as leaders or players in the black empowerment movement. Uh, I am about, hey, if I see something and people who know me know some of the things that have happened to me that people have done to me and they know I'm not going to go into that and I'll never do it. Um, I can't say what someone else won't do, but my whole thing is I'm who I am and I know who I am and I'm not shaken by other people's opinions of me. I'm not driven by uh, the bite bat bat uh what is it backbiting that consistently happens here because we think that we have to claw at each other to find a little place in these little spaces i don't claw for anything what's mine is mine what i build is mine what i develop is mine who i become is me and i will not attack someone else just to make me feel better and I hope that in some way in doing that consistently, I inspire more people to see the power of love. First, when you love yourself and you know yourself, you don't have to go out and go after and tack. And number two, you stop. You, once you start to really truly embrace yourself and love yourself and stand on who you are, you get to a point where hearing negative things about people vexes your spirit. I'd rather hear about people becoming empowered. I would rather hear about people becoming healed. I would rather hear about people getting out of financial uh, uh, bankruptcy. I would rather hear about people healing their marriages. I would rather hear about people uh, developing stronger community bonds. I would rather be a power, powerful source and contributor to that than the T. Um, again, I never heard of this guy. I'm not saying that, that that he doesn't have an underground pool or whatever. Somebody felt it was necessary to have them on their podcast. So whoever he is and whatever he uh, has done, that's him. Uh, but my whole thing is a lot of times people need to drop stuff in order to remain relevant. Now, the thing that has to be understood and should be thought of as well is there's no proof that it happens now. I mean, you can draw your own conclusion and say, hey, man, you know, I, and I'm not going to become the apologist for what he said. But my thing is, personally, if I was 
the Henderson family, I wouldn't respond to it. I would treat it as if it was beneath me. Uh, I will continue to do the work in the community. The, because here's the thing, there are going to be people who believe in you and there are going to be people who don't. There are going to be people who will see the work you're doing and see the authenticity and genuineness in your work and know who you are. And there will be people who want to believe bad things about you for things that are going on inside of them. And nothing is going to change that. Uh, so what you have to do is make up in your mind that you're going to do your work. Do your work let the scoundrels be scoundrels and this isn't about it being true or false this is about this was not unnecessary man do, if there are so many things that i could just pull out and start throwing out and i mean about a bunch of people that a lot of people know but it has no intrinsic value nobody gets better because of it that there's a temporary buzz that might get created but what I would lose in credibility, what I would lose in reputation, what I would lose in spirit in my heart, what I would lose in connectivity to God and, and the work that I'm trying to accomplish would be devastating in comparison to some little freaking buzz that can be created by dropping some secrets that happened back when. So my challenge is, hey, look, we've got to do uh, better. We've got to stop. Uh, Snatching low-hanging fruit, climb the damn tree, scale the mountain, uh, ascend to a level where the things that you engage are healing, enlightening, empowering, encouraging, inspirational. And you'll find that the power that we talk about having is within our grasp, but not as long as we're still wallowing in the muck and the mire of the trash that they're throwing at us and expecting us to play with. Daddy's always say you play with trash, son, it gets in your eyes. And I'm going to leave you with that. As I said in the beginning, if you like what you see in here on this channel, click the like button, click the share button. If you believe in the work that I've done as a researcher, as a program developer, as a lecturer, a scientist, and a psychologist, definitely look in the description box and see how you can give to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. On that note, I'm out of here. I want to thank you guys once again for stopping in. Have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.